Hey everybody, Economic Ninja here. I hope you're doing well. These are the days that I or any other YouTuber in finance live for. There is so much news, it is absolutely amazing. And I wanna to get to a couple news stories, how gasoline and um, uh, diesel prices have just spiked on the markets. The uh, Prices have just absolutely blown up. We're gonna talk about 2008, those parallels. We're also gonna talk about how Russia's central bank has halted buying gold and the reason why will blow your mind. But I wanna stop real quick and talk about a, a regular person that texts or uh, comments in the comment section below. Left a pretty interesting comment. They said this was after the Saudi Arabia video I did, how Saudi Arabia just inked a deal with China uh, to uh, trade uh, oil in Yuan. And the person said something to the effect of, you know, that's a low blow even for you. That's total clickbait. Um, they said in the article, they're considering it. I want to explain something to you guys. And I want, I wanted this to really sink in because I've had the, I've been very fortunate to learn and live near uh, and just soak in so much knowledge from, from so many influential, amazingly successful people in this world. And this is how the world works. They considered selling oil in Yuan a long time ago. It is now done. What they did is they let you and the world down easy because they're still holding on to a little bit of dollars and they need to get rid of them. Behind the scene, they're out there doing it. I actually know this uh, for one uh, matter of fact because one of my real estate brokerages specialized in selling ag land to uh, big buyers and Saudi Arabia, if you'll Google it, has been buying up farmland in California and Arizona like crazy over the last five years. They are diversifying out of their dollars and one way to do it is buy up our stuff. That's why if they're in here buying it and competing with our companies or other countries, that's why the land goes up. They're slowly getting out. The deal is already done and I will dare say and watch this uh, in the future, this video or mark the words and I'm sure there's gonna be lots of people that do it. I give it four weeks maybe at tops eight weeks from now, the official announcement will come out and said, okay, we're doing it. We've inked the deal. I want you to understand that is literally how the world works. They're letting you down easy as they're getting out. It's already done. They would not go to the trouble and say, let's put out a press release. Yeah, we're thinking about doing it and then not do it. That's not how the world works. I want you guys to think more globally, more forward thinking into the future, okay? When Jerome Powell came out and says, I see a day where the dollar's not the only reserve currency in the world. That wasn't a, oh, hey, just thought I'd say something. I didn't know what to say to you guys in Congress. No, that is called the shot across the bow. That is the warning to everybody that should be warned. And it is the signal to everybody in the know. Here we go, guys, let's do this. All right, so without further ado, let's do this. So this is off of Wall Street. I'm gonna link it below. Diesel spikes to $5.25 and gasoline to 432 in historic leaps. But wait a minute, futures of crude oil and gasoline plunge. Now, I'll just read it because it'll explain it better than me. People are painfully aware of what happened to gasoline prices that pump over the past two weeks. Now guys, first off, I wanna tell you the Ninja drives a sweet diesel truck and it's getting a sweet 14 miles a gallon. Trust me, I am just like you. I feel it at the pump, it's no fun. Now I've done things to hedge myself, like build up income streams so I don't get totally stressed out. But I'll tell you what, even when you know the prices are going up, and I'm telling you, I believe, especially in California, this summer, we're gonna see between 10 and $12 fuel some point in the summer. That's gonna be nuts. I believe the national average is going up to five, $6 a gallon. It is gonna be absolutely catastrophic, but there's not much we could do about that other than get prepared. So I feel, I feel your pain. But it says here, right here, the average retail price of number two highway diesel to be passed on in cost of everything that ar arrived, sorry, at the house, office, store, construction site, or manufacturing plant has been rising since November of 2020. And on Monday, it jumped to a record $5.25 a gallon. Um, and that was from the U.S. Energy Department's EIA. Now that was yesterday, okay? I'm putting this video out today on a Tuesday. Uh, based on surveys from gas stations conducted during the day. It said over those two weeks, diesel spiked by $1.15 or by 28% in two weeks. That is absolutely monstrous. That was by far the biggest two week spike in the data going back to 1994, okay? But we're gonna talk about a very special time in history and what it did to our country. Diesel is now up 64% from the same week last year, 64%. We're talking national average. That is absolutely mind bogging and it's going to hurt so many companies and so many small businesses in the coming weeks, in the coming months. The prior record high for diesel of $4.76 occurred in July of 2008. 
after which it got blown out of the water by demand destruction resulting from the financial crisis. So let's stop right there. That is a very important thing. I've talked about that special time in history very many uh, in many videos because it's so important. You see, when diesel spiked to that $4.76 a gallon, we saw uh, stories, and it was in June of 2008, right? Bear Stearns had collapsed in the spring. We'd already all been given stimulus checks a year brought before that because the economy was actually collapsing in 06. So in 07, they're giving us stimulus checks. Bear Stearns gone. A few months later, gasoline is, is diesel is spiking, and semi trucks were literally pulling off on the side of the road, and there were headlines all over the place saying, "This is it. It's too much. We can't do this. We cannot survive." And a lot of that is because companies have contracts to fulfill business. Now there are some contracts are, are well written, and they have a fuel surcharge. And I guarantee you, right now, companies are rewriting contracts like you would not believe. But I believe a lot of companies are going to get caught red-handed. And this is going to hurt people, a lot of people. Now let's talk about gasoline. The average price of all grades of gasoline at the pump jumped to a record $4.32 a gallon on Monday. Okay, record price in gasoline. So <laughs> this is incredible. Monday, according to the EIA, by up over 19.6% in the last two weeks. Also the biggest two-week jump in data going back to 1994. Year over year, gasoline was up 51%. Now, I want you to understand another thing too. These prices are predicated on a barrel of oil hitting what almost had barely touched $130 a barrel. In 2008, June, oil WTI spiked at a top price of $136 a barrel. So we have these amazing prices in gas and diesel, and we still haven't hit that all-time high in the barrel of oil. But you have to remember it's because of all the taxes that are on top of it, okay? It says right here, adjusted for CPI, we're not, oh, let me go back. Gasoline was up 51% year over year, okay? So it's not as a great of a spike as diesel, but it's still gnarly. It says, but adjusted for CPI, we're not even there yet either. In 2008, July, gasoline hit $4.11 before demand destruction, the financial crisis knocked it down. And that is exactly what happened because what happened as the economy was collapsing, people didn't go on vacations as much. They didn't have to go and get in their construction truck and drive to work because there was no homes to be built. We have not seen that yet. We are in a very interesting place that it's gonna be even more dangerous because everybody's waking up from the, you know, the situation around us when they're locked in their houses and they wanna get out and party and they wanna go on vacation and they wanna build a house. And you know, I see the comments all over, people wanna live, right? That is going to be like a hurricane hitting a beach this it, it looks like it's oh yeah there's a storm out there but it's not until it hits you on the beach where it causes the destruction and right now that hurricane is market activity people trying to get out and live buy houses that kind of stuff and and people that are being fearful of buying houses right now because rates are going up so my point being is that that is coming and it's going to smack us in the face now we're going to talk about the russian gold story Russians are buying so much gold amid the ruble's collapse that the central bank halted its own purchases from the banks. Now you guys have seen before the famous picture of Putin holding that gold brick, right? And they have been, the Russian central bank has been buying gold hand over fist along with China for more than a decade. They have been huge buyers of gold. Now they're having a problem. It says that their central bank is suspending purchases of gold from banks amid increased consumer demand. It says Russians have sought gold as a way to preserve wealth as the ruble tumbles to historic lows. And then we're gonna go into a little bit more. It says, uh, according to a report from Reuters, the central bank said household demand for physical gold bars has increased following the abolition of value, of a value added tax on these operations. Russians have been seeking safe havens from their wealth since the country's attack on Ukraine spurred widespread economic sanctions and the subsequent collapse of the ruble, which is now worth less than a penny. Uh, in all fairness, it was only worth about 1.5 pennies before all this started, I believe, if I have it right. Uh, the central bank's pause on gold buying follows the announcement just last month that the financial authority would resume purchasing of the precious metals after commercial banks in the country face sanctions from the West in response to the attack on Ukraine. According to Bloomberg, Russia is the fifth largest owner of gold globally. I'm going to stop there. This is absolutely incredible. You are seeing AMC theaters buying a gold mining company. You are seeing Tesla buying physical gold and paper gold right now. They're diversifying out of the dollar. Wealthy, wealthy individuals are buying up gold and silver as fast as they can. 
You know, I do have my finger on the pulse of the gold and silver physical market, and the, it is absolutely tight. It's mind blowing how uh, high the premiums are going to go because it's so hard to get hands on the physical. The mints cannot stick up with the physical, right? Um, I have friends that I ended up uh, getting a couple of affiliate links. I'll pin them in the comment section below to vaulting companies, good solid vaulting companies that vault gold all over the world. And just so you know, where you think it could be confiscated, they're not in the business of being confiscated because you have the very wealthy people investing in vaulting gold too, because it's just quite simply becoming so, it, it's cumbersome to, to vault or to hold onto a bunch of silver and gold at a certain point, right? So wealthy people all around the world are doing this. This is absolutely a mind blowing time in economic history. You guys are living through it right now. Now the good positive side is, is you're watching this channel. So like the Saudi Arabia story, you already know the narrative. You know that they're trying to get out of dollars. They're proving it by even suggesting, yeah, we're thinking about going with China and using their yuan. Now remember guys, what does China have right now that no other currency has? They have a gold backed uh, uh, bond, a gold backed bond. That is a big deal. I have a feeling, I have a weird feeling, I'm not, this is not a prediction, but this is just gonna be an assumption, that the announcement's gonna come out, it's not only the yuan that they're trading in, it's gonna be that gold-backed yuan. That's gonna be the trigger. When that happens, oh my gosh, get ready to watch what happens to the price of gold. And it may not happen that day, because it takes people a little bit of time. There's people on AMC threads right now, like mocking AMC for buying a, a gold and silver miner, and they have no idea what's happening right now to the currencies all around the world. They're all falling together. That's proven because inflation is going up all over the world. That means the currencies are dog poo. And sorry for a lack of better terms, but I think dog poo is good. If I had an emoji, uh, an editor right now, there'd be an emoji of dog poo right now. I just That's just how we do it. All right, guys, that being said, I thank you so much for watching The Economic Ninja is out.